Hey, it's Harry, and today we're going to have a look at the audio loopback feature on the Evo 4 audio interface, when you'd use it, and how it works. Loopback enables you to capture your computer audio as a separate source alongside your microphones. Imagine taking a set of cables from the output of your interface and bringing them straight back into the inputs of the interface and then accessing them from your audio software. This is essentially what audio loopback is doing, but it all happens internally without the need for cables and most importantly, while leaving your inputs free for you to use your microphones with. There are two main ways that you can use audio loopback. The first is to record your computer audio and your microphone audio separately on different channels. This is perfect if you want to record a Skype conversation for a remote podcast that you're doing, or maybe you wanna capture some game audio alongside your microphone to create a YouTube video. Doing it this way gives you the most flexibility in terms of mixing your two different audio sources to get the best result. Secondly, you're able to combine your mic and your computer audio into a single stereo channel. This is perfect if you're wanting to record or stream using some software that doesn't let you use more than one audio input at a time. There are a number of ways that you can use audio loopback in your workflow, and it's up to you to get creative with it. But as with any audio routing, loopback can be a little bit hard to get your head around sometimes, especially seeing as there aren't any physical cables for you to be able to see exactly where the audio is going. So to make the whole process easier, we've developed the audio loopback mixer, which will allow you to choose exactly what's being sent where. So I'm gonna talk through how it works and give you a couple of examples of using loopback. To access the loopback mixer, you need to make sure that the Evo app is running and then click on the Evo icon in the menu bar on a Mac or the system tray on Windows. Find the show loopback mixer menu item and then click it. This will open the loopback mixer window. So the mixer controls exactly what's being sent to the loopback inputs and therefore what will be picked up by your audio software. Whether you're recording your computer audio onto some audio software or whether you're sending things out to a stream. When you turn up any of the channels, it will be sent through to the loopback inputs. And your audio software will pick up these loopback inputs in the same way that it does with your microphones. So your microphones come in on input one and two and your loopback will come in on input three and four. So first you have the mic channels, which controls the level of your microphones or instruments. And these are the actual physical microphone inputs that you have on the unit itself. Next, you have the main outputs, and this is the default output of your computer. So any audio coming from a web browser, game, or any other application that's currently running will automatically be sent through here by default. Next, you have loopback one and two. And these are the virtual outputs that you can send audio to. To send audio to this output, you either do it in the application you're actually wanting to capture audio from, so you'd set the audio output of that application to outputs three and four, or loopbacks one and two, depending on what's shown to you. Or alternatively, you can change the default output of your computer to the loopback output so that everything on your computer is sent there instead of to the main outputs. It's probably easiest to go through an example together so you can see exactly how the audio is being sent around. So in this scenario, we're going to go through how to record the output of a video conferencing app, in this case Skype, alongside a microphone in a digital audio workstation. This is a handy solution often used in the world of podcasting where someone might want to bring in a remote guest and they can record their output separately from their own microphone in high quality. I'll go through the example on both Mac and Windows, starting with Mac. So if you want the Windows version, then please go to the timestamp on the screen now. When Evo 4 is selected as your computer's and Skype's audio device, any audio that comes through them will appear on the main outputs. So the absolute easiest way to record your Skype conversation would be to turn up the main output faders, then create a channel in your audio software using inputs three and four, or loopback one and two as the input source. And the name you see will depend on whatever software you're actually using. You'd then create another channel to record your microphone and set it to input one, and then you're ready to record. Okay, so right now I am recording onto the separate mic channel. And I'm coming through on the loopback channel by the main outputs. This method, however, means you need to mute the audio channels in your software while you're recording, because otherwise by default it gets sent to your outputs, which is now being sent through to inputs, which then gets sent back to outputs, and you basically keep going round and round and create a feedback loop, which makes a horrible noise. To give an example of what happens if you decide to monitor through your audio software, I'm going to try and do that now, and you'll hear some lovely, lovely feedback. So now I'm gonna turn it on now, like that. And now there is lots of feedback happening. So make sure you have the channels muted, and don't worry, you'll still actually be able to hear everything that's going on on your computer, so Skype and whatever else is happening as normal through speakers or headphones. 
And if you do want to be able to hear your microphone through your headphones as well, you can still make use of the monitor mix, which does let you blend between your inputs and your computer as normal. If you want to be able to listen through your audio software, if you maybe have some processing that you want to listen to live, or you just want to avoid the issue of having feedback altogether, then this is where you use the loopback one and two outputs in the loopback mixer. So your computer or application sends everything through to the loopback outputs, which is then brought back through into your audio software, and then your audio software sends everything to the main outputs. So everything is kept completely separate, there's no chance of feedback, and you can listen through any effects or anything you have in your audio software. So let's switch the computer to use the loopback outputs one and two. So we go to Finder and click Applications, then Utilities, then Audio MIDI Setup. And we select Evo 4 from the list of devices and select Configure Speakers. Set your left and right output to loopback one and loopback two, now any audio sent from your Mac will be sent through to the loopback outputs instead of the main outputs, and you can see that in the loopback mixer. So now we go to the loopback mixer again and make sure that only the loopback one and two faders are turned up. So now when you play audio on your computer or make a sound on Skype, you should be able to see signal in the meters on those channels. So now that loopback is set up this way, the channel that we created earlier in the audio software will be taking its input from the loopback outputs instead of the main outputs, which means that we can unmute the channels in audio software and listen to them live without issues. Okay, so this is my microphone coming in separately. And I'm coming through on loopback inputs using the dedicated loopback outputs. When using the loopback outputs, you'll need to make sure that your audio software or streaming platform or whatever it is you're using is using the main outputs as the output device. Therefore, you'll be able to hear whatever's happening in your speakers or headphones. One final option to consider with loopback is combining your microphone with your computer audio so it all comes in on one single channel. And as I said earlier, this could be great if you're wanting to use some software or a streaming platform that will only allow one input channel at a time, or maybe you don't want to have to mix and edit two channels and you just want to balance it and have one audio file to deal with in your edit. So by turning up the mic channel while the main output or loopback output are also turned up, you'll combine the signals together and you can balance the taste in the loopback mixer. Okay, so now we should be combined into a single channel. So this is me talking. And this is me talking. Okay, um, and Dan there is coming in a little bit too hot. So what we'll do is we'll just turn down his channel a bit. And now again, this is an example of me talking. And here's an example of me talking. Yeah, and that's much better and we can continue to tweak if we'd like. So now I've switched my Mac over to run Windows and we can go through how to get this all set up on a Windows system. So when Evo 4 is selected as the sound device on a Windows system or in an application specifically, any audio sent from that is gonna be sent through to the main output in Evo 4. So the absolute easiest way to record your Skype conversation is to turn up the main output fader. Then we just create a channel in our audio software that uses inputs three and four, or loopback one and two is the channel input, and the name will change depending on what software you're using. You then create another channel in your audio software to record your microphone and set it to input one. And now you're pretty much ready to record. Although this method does require you to mute the channels in the audio software while you're recording. And this is because by default, your audio software will be sending audio out to the main outputs of Evo 4, which because of the loopback mixer is now being sent back through to the inputs, which will then get sent through to the outputs. And it'll keep going round and round and basically create a feedback loop. Okay, so right now I am recording onto the separate mic channel. And I'm coming through on the loopback channel by the main outputs. And to give an example of what happens if you decide to monitor through your audio software, I'm going to try and do that now. And you'll hear some lovely, lovely feedback. So now I'm going to turn it on now. Like that. And now there is lots of feedback happening. So just make sure that you mute your channels in your audio software while you're recording. But don't worry though, you can still hear everything that's going on on your computer. You can still hear your Skype conversation through your headphones or speakers as normal. And if you do want to be able to hear whatever's happening on your inputs, you can still use the monitor mix button on Evo 4 itself and blend between your inputs and your outputs. If you do want to be able to listen through your audio software, if you maybe have some effects you want to listen through live, or maybe you just want to minimize the possibility of creating any feedback loops, then using the loopback outputs is the way to do it. So your computer or application sends everything through to the loopback outputs, which is then brought back through into your audio software, 
and then your audio software sends everything to the main output. So everything is kept completely separate, there's no chance of feedback, and you can listen through any effects or anything you have in your audio software. So in this particular example, if you go into the audio settings of Skype, you can actually select the loopback one and two outputs as the audio output. So this sends any of Skype's audio straight to the loopback outputs. But not all applications are gonna give you this option, so the other thing to do would be to change your computer's default output to the loopback output. So we'll go through how to do that now. So first you go to Control Panel, and then you go to Hardware and Sound, then Sound, and then select the Playback tab. Then in the list of outputs, find Loopback 1 and 2, select it, and then click Save Default Device. Any application or any audio from your computer will now default to use the loopback outputs instead of the main outputs. Now we go back into the loopback mixer and make sure that only loopback one and two faders are turned up and pan left and right if you want stereo. So now we've set up loopback in this way, the audio channel that we created earlier in our audio software to capture our Skype audio will be taking its audio from the loopback outputs instead. So now if you unmute the channels, you'll be able to listen to them live without the risk of feedback. When using the loopback outputs, you'll need to make sure that your audio software or streaming platform or whatever it is you're using is using the main outputs as the output device. Therefore, you'll be able to hear whatever's happening in your speakers or headphones. Okay, so this is my microphone coming in separately. And I'm coming through on loopback inputs using dedicated loopback outputs. One final option to consider with loopback is combining your microphone with your computer audio so it all comes in on one single channel. And as I said earlier, this could be great if you're wanting to use some software or a streaming platform that will only allow one input channel at a time, or maybe you don't want to have to mix and edit two channels and you just want to balance it and have one audio file to deal with in your edit. So by turning up the mic channel, while the main output or loopback channels are also turned up, you'll combine the signals together and then can balance the taste in the loopback mixer. Okay, so now we should be combined into a single channel. So this is me talking. And this is me talking. Okay, um, and Dan there is coming in a little bit too hot. So what we'll do is we'll just turn down his channel a bit. And now, again, this is an example of me talking. And here's an example of me talking. Yeah, and that's much better. And we can continue to tweak if we'd like. Hopefully this all makes sense. And remember that audio loopback functionality can be slightly different depending on the software or even the operating system that you're using, but there's loads of different ways to use it and we can't wait to see what you come up with. We have some written instructions on how to set loopback up available on our website if you'd rather read about it than hear me talk about it. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like. And if you still have any questions about loopback or how it works, then please leave a comment or get in touch with our support team and they'll be happy to help. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with Evo related news and video content.